We're going to move on from uh, what's happening in the aftermath of the Poonch attack to what's happening on the battlefield for uh, politics, the electoral battlefield, as it were, in Karnataka. It's well and truly underway now. Election officers have completed scrutinizing the nomination papers of all the candidates for the single-phase polls that will happen 10th of May. Uh, but the question is, who is going to have the edge in what is a very, very hotly contested state election? looking at the Bharatiya Janta Party to be really different, have a very clear cut clarity, strategy, so that people can look up much more confident in more better way. So the party took a decision uh, to have new faces in some of the... new faces. Yeah, 72 new faces. I ask you, as a citizen of India, Mr. Prime Minister Modi, wasn't Mr. Ishwarappa sat as a minister because a BJP leader and worker Santosh Patel committed suicide. All right, so after being denied a ticket to contest uh, the Karnataka Assembly elections that are coming up soon, former Minister K.S. Ishwarappa, who had recently announced his political retirement, got a call from Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. Prime Minister Modi thanked Ishwarappa for accepting the party's decision and praised his loyalty. Ishwarappa is a five-time MLA from Shivamoga and one of the most prominent Kuruba leaders that the BJP has. Ishwarappa wanted to run for a sixth term, but he was dropped from the BJP's list of candidates. Even his son, K. E. Kantesh, was denied a ticket from Shivamoga. But Ishwarappa assured Prime Minister Modi that he will campaign for the party's nominee from his constituency. All right, let me now go across to our guest. Ashok Gowda is BJP Karnataka spokesperson. Sanket Yanagi, KPCC spokesperson. Pratap Kanagal is JDS spokesperson. Uh, Ashok Gowda, let me start with you first. Uh, I believe that as many as 10 sitting MLAs of the BJP, 10 of them, have switched over either to the Congress or the JDS. I believe in the history of Karnataka elections, this is a record. Uh, are we to understand that the wind is going in one direction because 10 of them quitting your party, joining other opposition parties uh, does not bode well for you? See, let's understand. We have been following certain key, key, key principles in every state elections and including in Karnataka. So it's not the first time that in, in, in Karnataka we have changed the sitting MLAs. We have changed it in the past also. And turn courts have always lost the elections, whether it was in early uh, in the six uh, in 1960s or even even in 1990s or even today they will lose the elections. Many of them. In fact, our principle is very simple. We believe in karyakartas working working for the party and working for the ideology. And we have 99.9 percent .9 of the karyakartas who are dedicated to the philosophy and the principles of the party. Apparently, if there are 0.1%, like just say Jagdish Shetter, who, who actually like, you know, we were, we were all confused. S.S. Shetter was not, uh, his father S.S. Shetter was not the, uh, basically the RSS uh, mayor of uh, Ubli Darwad. Whereas he, he was staying in one of the, uh, in, the in, 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 um, in, in another person's house, where Sadanand Shetter, Sadanand Shetter was the mayor. Whereas Shiv Shankar Shetter was only in his house. So this kind of a people can turn out to be the turn courts, but we are not. But Mr. Gowda, Mr. Gowda, whichever way you try to spin it, fact is a former chief minister from your party has quit after being associated with your party for 40 plus years, has quit because he's not got a ticket and he, as he said in his press conference, not just not getting the ticket, but also not got an explanation why, for why he was not given the ticket and joined the exact opposite party. Surely something is, is, is calls for introspection that, there. That, yeah, yeah. He should introspect for himself 
when you voted for article 370 when you voted for ram janmabhoomi when you voted for anti conversion bill in the karnataka assembly and cow slaughter bill so these are the principles what jagdish shetty should answer to himself and whether he will agree to for the congress the way it had split lingayat and uh, lingayat and virashaivas okay. whether he will agree in karnataka uh, assembly when he, when he himself had voted how will he how will his uh, okay uh, so let me ask sanket uh, yanagi uh, of the congress to respond to that here is a man i i don't want to make this jagdish shetty specific but whether it is lakshman savadi whether it is uh, jagdish shetty mp kumar swami a whole bunch of bjp folks have resigned and joined the congress or some of them have joined the jds as well i mean these are people who believe in things like uh the ram mandir uh, the uniform civil code those are not ideologies of your party so are we to believe in karnataka there are no ideologies haryana used to be the uh, the fiefdom of iram gayaram now it seems like uh, karnataka is the new iram gayaram see these people who have quit the bjp are all staunch bjpians let us understand that fact they all fought for the bjp they developed bjp they have seen the growth of the bjp in the southern india they are not someone who has come in the middle of the way having seen that if the people of that stature think that there is no atmosphere in the party which is said to be democratical or there is a suffocation in the party <laughs> there is no democratic principles left in the party either for the democracy the internal democracy or we can talk about the democracy of the country if the people are coming out of the party irrespective of the religion whether it is lingayat vakkaliga or me be it any religion the moment they are coming out of the party that is a warning signal for a party to think and rethink about its future and its strategies and its conduct if so, the party thinks that those people are not wise enough or those people are not worthy enough or those people have not contributed having attained this the, the seat of a chief minister hmm. then why did you make a person who is unworthy according to you as a chief minister no no, no, no the same can that be the asked the same can be asked sanket yanagi of your party you and yourself said the, these guys government. have been bjp and no no these let's guys see. have been bjp ends for their life why are you then taking them into your party does 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 your yes, party not the, have enough karyakartas to give jaka, tickets to is does your jaka, party not raised, have an ideology that you believe in jaka you have raised a very valid question let me answer that question in a valid way firstly those who believe in the constitutional principles and the principles of the congress as one and the same they are always welcome irrespective of their political party's affiliation or political party's membership if the bjp's members think that there is nothing left in the bjp to be said to be democratical and if they think that there is nothing left to be said that they are to be termed as the people of democracy or they can ignore uh, the, the respect of democracy and they are ignoring the democracy if they feel disheartened because the democracy is in danger okay if they want to come back to or come to the, the the party which wants to save the democracy of the country or to respect the constitution of the country we will welcome and so, we so so let me ask pratap ganagal okay consider one aspect so, no, 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 so no, sanket jaka is saying okay. that if, no, no, if, if, they, if they believe jaka, in basic one minute, basic please, democracy please, and so, oh, no no one second one second let, let, let me also please one, one bring minute, in, you are let me also please bring in pratap ganagal please let me no i will not allow you you have sir sir i am the moderator sir what do you mean you will not allow me i am the moderator no no allow me to complete the i i i'll come back to you let pratap ganagal come into the debate uh pratap kanagal uh, it seems like this election is a two way affair either congress or bjp your party which is the third party and has always been the third party in the karnataka elections even within the first family you are not able to come to a consensus on some critical seats like hasan which is uh, you know was represented by no, no, none less than mr devagowda for a number of years you are not able to come to a consensus on who the candidate there should be there's a, a huge fight that is going on between you know mr revanna and his brother mr kumar swami have you given up on this election is this election essentially between the bjp and the congress they are the two primary players and you know you you don't exist on the electoral map let me clarify one thing you know it's not the constitution the constitution what the reference is also lok sabha constitution but the 
Mr. Uh, 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 I am I am really sorry, but uh, there is some problem with your audio. Let's try and see if we can fix that uh, so that we can hear you clearly. Uh, and then I'll come back to I'll come back to you. Let's please fix Mr. Kanagal's audio. Am I uh, audible? All right. I'm audible. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as I said, uh, that Asan constituency you're referring, it is not Lok Sabha constituency. Uh, Devagoda, Mr. Devagoda represented Lok Sabha constituency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wherein the, uh, the seat in question was Assembly constituency, which was like you know, represented by Mr. H. S. Prakash, yes. who represented JDS and won uh, that constituency for four times. And last time, H. S. Prakash lost the election. But however, this time, the, the, like you know, that question, there was two aspirants. One is Mr. Mrs. Uh, Bhavani Rivanna, uh, who is the uh, wife of uh, Mr. H.D. Rivanna, and uh, Mr. Swaru Prakash, who is the son of uh, former uh, uh, MLA late H.S. Uh, Prakash. However, there was like, you know, because there is a high chances of winning in that constituency. There was a, there was a tough competition. And uh, as Mr. H.D. Kumaraswamy promised on the day one, it will be given to the Karakata and Mr. Swaru Prakash. We applies to that, and uh, Mr. H. S. Prakash son, Mr. H. S. Uh, sorry, H. P. Swaroop is the candidate of the constituency, and uh, for the long filing Mr. of Mr. Kanagal, the, the simple point I'm making is, Mr. Yes. Kanagal, one second. The Bawani. simple point, the simple point I'm making is, the entire narrative, whether it is in local media or in national media, seems to be around these two national parties, Congress and BJP. Your party seems to be a very, very distant third. No, no, it's completely wrong. It's because see, what happens is like, you know, media, national media obviously give a preference to national parties because you have audience all over across the country. So you focus on those two people. There is an undercurrent. There is in last 10 days, what was the developments happened? There is a dozens of people who have joined us for the winning, winning, winnable candidates. And we are okay. confident that we will form the government without any, without any help of these national parties. We will be the king. Okay, let me go I back to Mr. Ashok Gowda of the BJP and to Sanket Yenagi of the Congress. Ashok Gowda, I, I keep coming back to this point. You know, on the one hand, you said no dynastic politics and yet Mr. Yedirappa's son has got ticket, Mr. Umesh Katti's son has got ticket. The whole list, I think about 28, 29 people are related to somebody or the other uh, uh, in the BJP. So, dynastic politics, that was one, one aspect that got negated. Then you said seniors must not be given tickets. There are some seniors who are on the other side of 70. Mr. Shetar said this in his press, press conference. At least two names he gave out who are on the other side of 70 who have been given a ticket. But those are, uh, who are yet, yet to be 70 like Mr. Shetar have been denied a ticket. I mean, what is the principle? I, I, you said 52 new faces have been given. And yet at the same time, when your first list came, which is about 150, 160 seats, uh, sorry, one, 180 seats, I think, that, that, that were declared. 189. Uh, yeah, one, 189 seats were declared. Only nine sitting MLAs have been denied tickets. So, I come back to the point. I mean, all of these principles that you seem to have for other states, and the BJP is a national party, and this seems to be a formula for you in other states, you have not applied in Karnataka. Either you are not confident of, the, of that same formula applying in Karnataka, or something has gone amiss. Okay, let me correct the data points uh, with Zaka. First thing is we have given a, a new faces, all uh, uh, 72, mm. and we have not denied the tickets for the sitting MLS 17, 17 in number. Mm. And that being the case, and as well as the maximum women have been given tickets for the first time in Karnataka, and that also being the case, let's keep that apart. But the principle, what you what you are saying is like, you know, why did we not follow 70 years? And why what is the what is the principle of giving a ticket? To the sitting MLA son or sitting MLA's daughter-in-law, somebody like that. Yeah. That's the question what you are trying to yeah. answer yeah. or ask. Yeah. But that is not the dynastic politics. For example, in the case of Arvind Limbawali, his wife was a corporator earlier and she was associated to the party even before she got married to Arvind Limbawali. Can we call it as just because they have got married and she does not because she does it does not become an ineligible for being given any MLA ticket. And that 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 is just one case. There are so many people. Karadi Sangana's daughter-in-law. She has been working constantly with the party for so many years, and she is more proactive than <laughs> than anybody else in that region. That that is a separate issue. Now, what is dynastic politics? What we define it as? Dynastic politics is power centered with one family. Like in what happens in uh, uh, in Janata Dining Service Party. Janata Dining Service Party, where only so if you people call Janata Dining on Service Party, party we can't can everything. Once again, once again, once again. Indian National Congress Party, Indian National Congress Party, 
No, if you can call JDS as a Janata Dining Party, then we call this campaign. Okay, one at a time, one at a time. One at a time, please, please. Mr. 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 Mr.
ट्रेनिंग तो जरूर होगी एकेडमी का लाइट तो सोलर पावर से ऑन हो गया अब अपनी पावर ऑन करे है तेरे साथ सूरज की चमक कुछ कोई रोक ना पाएगा मेरे बढ़ते कदम से ही तो कल नया जुड़िए न्यूज एटीन नेटवर्क और टाटा पावर के सस्टेनेबल इज अटेनेबल मिशन से और आइए दीजिए पावर को ग्रीन सिग्नल